I like to start every bullet point sentence in my CV with a powerful action verb. And many people also think that doing a master's is just like an extra year of undergrad, and it's also a way of delaying the job searching process. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is V. In this video, I'll be talking about how to apply for a master's program at Imperial College London. This will be part one to a two-part series. In this video, I'll be covering topics like how to know which master's course to apply for, some of the things to be aware of during the online application process, and also how to write a CV that will stand out. I'll leave the timestamps for each of the sections in the description box below, so feel free to skip ahead to the section that you're interested in. In part two, I'll talk more about how to write a good personal statement and also what to expect during the interview and how to prepare for it. Before I get into the video, just for a bit of context, I'm currently studying the MSc Genes, Drugs and Stem Cells course at Imperial College London, and if you're interested in checking that course out, I'll be sure to leave the link to the course webpage in the description box below as well. Because my undergrad and also my current master's is very much related to biomedical sciences, some of what I say may be a bit more specific towards biomedical research. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Before you apply for a master's, it's important to know why you want to do one. Many people tend to do a master's because they're not really sure of what they want to do, and many people also think that doing a master's is just like an extra year of undergrad, and it's also a way of delaying the job searching process. And although that may partially be true, doing a master's should at least help you to narrow down your interests and to pursue that interest in a lot more depth. It's important to know that a master's requires a lot more independence, so don't be expected to constantly be told what to do. It's actually entirely up to you how much effort and time you want to put into your master's studies. If you do make full use of your master's, it'll be a great learning opportunity, especially in a science-related context, you get the opportunity to work in a lab, conduct your own experiments independently, to direct your own project, and also to generally just understand how things are run in the lab. If you do get along well with your supervisors, which I recommend doing so, they'll definitely be great referees for when you want to apply for a job or maybe a PhD in the future as well. Many research-related positions do state that in their job description that having a master's degree is definitely more desirable in a candidate. And especially with job applications getting more and more competitive every single year, having that relevant lab experience from your master's degree will definitely put you a level above the rest. To summarize, doing a master's will help you advance in your career and also enhance your professional network. When doing a master's, you should be studying something that you're passionate about and also something that can help contribute to your bigger career goal. If you're absolutely unsure of which career path you want to pursue, something that really helped me out about two to three years ago is this concept of ikigai, which is the Japanese saying to identify your purpose of living. And it's essentially the reason you look forward to waking up in the morning. Now, I won't go into the details of this, but to summarize, your career should ideally be an overlap of these four aspects. Something that you're passionate about, something that you're good at, something that you can be paid for, and something that the world needs. When I tried out this exercise, I listed a bunch of different things for each of these aspects, and I found that where all of them overlapped was research. And although research wasn't something that I was naturally and immediately good at, it was definitely something that I grew to be very passionate about over the years. On the other hand, if you already have a rough idea of which subject area that you want to go into, for example, you're interested in biology, but you're not exactly sure which specific area of biology you want to go into. It could be maybe genetics, immunology, cancer research, or even microbiome. This was something that I personally struggled with because from my undergrad, I knew that I really enjoyed biomedical sciences. And although biomed is a pretty niche field in itself, you can definitely have many, many sub areas within biomedical sciences. This is why I applied to my current master's in genes, drugs, and stem cells, novel therapies. I just thought that that way I'd be given the opportunity to explore these three different research areas in a lot more depth, and it'll also give me a bit of time to just figure out exactly which research field I want to pursue in the future. But of course, there are many, many different master's courses out there, so you do really need to be patient when you're searching for a course that is most suited for you. You can have an idea of the different courses available by scrolling through each university website. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut way to go about this. You just sort of have to be really patient and then just look through each of the different course descriptions on the different university websites. And of course, similar to undergrad, each course offered at a different uni will vary quite a bit. So be sure to check out the course description before applying. If you're interested in checking out Imperial's list of master's program, I'll also leave a link for that in the description box below. 
If you're considering studying a master's course at Imperial, you'll most likely come across these two terms, MSc and MRes. MSc stands for Master's in Science and MRes stands for Master's in Research. MSc usually has a taught component to it and depending on the course, it may also have a lab component. In my course, there was about six months worth of teaching and also six months worth of a lab project. MRes, on the other hand, is entirely research-based, so you can kind of think of it as a mini PhD that lasts for about one year. If you know exactly what you want to do and the field of research that you'd like to pursue, then I think MRes would definitely be the more suitable option for you. After you have an idea of which master's course you want to apply for, it's time to move on to the online application process. A master's isn't really like UCAS, where you can submit the same personal statement to your top five university choices. The application process is actually specific to each different uni, so each uni will have an online application portal that you'll need to register for when applying. This online application platform is where you fill in your personal information, submit your CV, personal statement, and also references. Once you've submitted all necessary documents, you may need to pay an application fee of around £60, but this definitely depends on the university. But for the course that I applied to at Imperial, I actually didn't need to pay for any additional application fees, but this may be a bit different with the Imperial Business School, so you might need to check that. At Imperial, I was actually allowed to apply for two different master's courses in a single application, so definitely just make sure to have a backup choice in mind. Every university and course also has different deadlines. I think for Oxbridge, many of the deadlines were in the autumn term or early of the winter term. And for many other universities, including Imperial, it usually just states on the website that the application process will just keep going until all placers are filled out. Just for a bit of context, I started my current master's course in October 2020, and I applied for that course earlier during the year in March 2020, I believe. And honestly, that's considered slightly late because there were some of my other course mates that applied either earlier in the year, like in January, or even the term before, like sometime in November or December. But then again, I've also heard of other people who applied sometime in like May or June and they still got the position. So I think that very much depends on the course and also how many people are applying for that specific course in that specific year. Now on to your CV. Most likely, when you apply online, you'll also need to attach a CV with it. When you write a CV, you can either go for a one or two full page CV. Definitely don't write anything that's like halfway or three quarters of the way through. Decide on either if you want a one full page or a two full page. Personally, I went for two pages. I won't elaborate too much on some of the more basic CV tips that your career services at your uni has probably told you about, but just a very quick refresher. Make sure to put your most important information at the very beginning of your CV. For me personally, I wrote my CV for my master's application during my third year. So my first section would be my education, and I wrote it from most recent to least recent. And then my next section was relevant lab experience. The next tip is to always be consistent in your layout, especially if you're using bullet points, make sure to use the same bullet point and also the same type of font throughout. If you want to bold or italicize some of your subheadings, make sure to do that very consistently as well. And if you want to add full stops, or if you don't want to add full stops at the end of each bullet point sentence, make sure that that's consistent throughout as well. Little details like these are actually really important because it just shows how much effort you put into your application and also how much you care about actually getting that position. And the final tip is to definitely check your grammar and spelling and make sure that that is perfectly written. Now on to some of my more personal tips that I just felt have worked better for me during my application. I like to start every bullet point sentence in my CV with a powerful action verb. And these can be words like collaborated, accomplished, reviewed, outlined, achieved, things like that. I believe there's this really helpful list of CV action words from Harvard, so I'll be sure to leave the link for that in the description box below as well. And the next tip is something that I think that many people have probably mentioned before, but it's especially important if you are a student. When you write the bullet points for each of your subheadings, for example, maybe one of your lab experiences that you had, make sure to not just list the things that you did. I mean, it's important to say like if you learned a certain technique, I think it's completely fine to list that out as well, but make sure to elaborate on what you've learned during that time. This can be an interpersonal skill or maybe like analytical skills, 
just basically say the things that you have learned from that experience. Like I said, this is especially important if you are a student because as a student, you probably don't have a lot of work experience. So it's important for the recruiter to know that you are a very teachable master student. For example, under one of my subheadings, research experience, I included my final year lab placement project. I wrote something along the lines of conducted a thorough literature review to gain a deep conceptual understanding of my research topic. If you're thinking of applying to a research-based course, here are just some of the subheadings that I included for my CV. So the first thing I included was education, and it was listed from most recent to least recent. And then the next thing I said was research experience. So this can be part of your undergrad degree or even an internship that you did during summer. And then the next subheading I included was lab techniques. So this could be anything like Western blot, PCR, some of the assays you did, or aseptic cell culture techniques. And next I said analytical skills, which is sort of a list of different data analysis softwares that I learned during my undergrad. So for example, ImageJ, Fiji, or GraphPad Prism would be really good. And my remaining subheadings were positions of responsibility, so any leadership positions that I held and what I did, and also any awards and also my other interests, so like my extracurricular activities. And my next few tips are more to do with the appearance of your CV. So I read somewhere that the font that you choose actually has some sort of psychological effect on the person who's reading your CV. So if you choose a serif font like Times New Roman, Georgia, or Baskerville, it gives this impression of classiness. And if you go for a sans serif font like Calibri or Open Sans, then it gives that impression of like modernness. And then of course, if you go for a more cursive font, it gives the impression of creativity. So depending on the type of masters that you're applying for, just make sure that you go for an appropriate font type. I personally like to pair two different font types. So I make my subheadings an all capital sans serif font, and then the subsequent bullet points are in a serif font. I just feel like that contrast and also that combination gives a good balance between modernness and also professionalism. Many people tend to recommend submitting a plain black and white CV, especially if you're applying for something in the UK. For my master's application, that's what I did as well. I did submit a black and white CV, but I feel like adding just a little pop of color to your CV, like maybe like the color blue in your title, so your name and maybe some of the subheadings as well. It just makes your CV stand out a little bit more and it also adds a little more personality. Thank you so much for staying till the end of this video. I hope that it was somewhat helpful in giving you a better idea of how to apply for a master's course in a science or research related subject. There will be a part two to this video where I talk about how to write a good personal statement, what to expect during an interview, and also how to prepare for one. If you enjoy videos like these, please be sure to like and subscribe. I make videos on what it's like to pursue an education and also a career in research. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!